Awesome, thanks. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, we have a really um, action-packed class tonight. We're gonna be doing the um, globe stitch, uh, also known as dot stitch or ball stitch bracelets and, um, and or earrings. You can make them earrings. And so I'm gonna try to cover a, a lot of info. So I'm gonna um, show you guys how to do the one that's like the sample here, which is where the, um, the intro, the beads are in between the little globes a lot closer on this design. And then there's the other version where you can space them out. And we have uh, the option to end with a button closure, which is a really fun way to finish off a design. Or you can put a clasp on it. So um, I'm hoping to cover all that. So I'm going to dive in, switch my camera, and uh, then we'll get started. Okay, so here's one of the versions. This is the version that's on the cover of the handout. And what you'll see here is um, a button closure. So it's got the adjustable finish on it, which I think is really fun. It's a really neat way to do a design, especially if you sell your work and you're not sure of the sizing, having it be adjustable is really fun. And what we did on this one was the beads are spaced out even um, just right after the dot. So you just, you make a globe, you put an eight and put a bead on it. But there's also, there's also this really fun option of creating it with just a little bit of space in between each of the globes and your beads. And that's really easily done just by adding a few extra beads in there. And so what I'm hoping for class today is to get through um, a couple demos of each style and then a demo of putting a clasp or a button on it. So here we go, um, diving in. So materials, we have um, the usual thread that I like to use, which is the, the 0.006 wildfire. And because there's a lot of passes in this design, I have out the 12s, sorry, the glare there, but um, I have out the 12s for this design. Um, you can probably get away with a 10, especially if you are working it with the size 10 seed beads versus the 11s. Um, but 12 recommended. And then the seed beads. So um, you'll need some size eight seed beads in whatever color you like. You'll need either 10s or 11s. You can use either. Um, one of the designs I made had 11s and one had 10s and they, they both work really nicely. So whichever you like. And then if you're doing the one with spacing, so that's this design, the one with a few beads in between, you might want to pull some sixes in for that. Alternatively, you could pull in some three or four millimeter beads, just anything with some texture interest or color interest to space out your, your globes there. Okay, and then focal beads. And this is where you can, you can literally use anything you want. Um, I went to the Strand Wall at Michael's and found a bunch of ideas. I was really feeling the aquas that day. <laughs> Everything is aqua. <laughs> but um, a bunch of cool little you know, choices. Some of these I've borrowed beads from. So I thought it was cool to note that you'll be able to get at least two, maybe three bracelets out of each one of these cards. And um, like, for example, I made one of the samples with this one, and then I made an additional one with this, and I still have all these beads left and the earrings that I made. I should show you guys the earrings. These are the earrings. And this bead came from, came from this card. It was one of the interest, strand, uh, interest beads on that strand. So there's just so many options here for a way to spin this and make it your own design. Um, and let's see, uh, last but not least, I just showed the earrings. If you're gonna do the earrings, you might want some cute charms to put on the bottom. And the earrings that I made had these little guys on it. There's, um, there's like, I think at least a dozen or, or more versions of charms like this on the Michael's charm wall. So it's kind of just the funnest thing in the world to go and see like, what's there and what can I use? Um, some hearts for Valentine's Day. Just so many cool stuff. So um, let's get started. And uh, oh, and I didn't show you really quick scissors, clasp, or a button. And for the button, I found um, 
the buttons in the sewing section at Michael's. It's actually kind of over like where the embroidery thread is. And that's where I found the buttons. These are the um, something blue menthol lancing, I think is the, anyway, it's in, it's in the handout with the, with the SKU number to find. All right, so 50 inches. We're gonna cut 50 inches of this. And I am gonna show you how to add thread, but um, you might not need to. If you wanted to maybe cut 60 inches, for sure you wouldn't, but um, depends on how, how many globes you make and um, what length you're going for. So cutting thread there. And then to get your needle threaded, especially since we're using those size 12 beading needles, if you have a pair of chinos, fatinos, or you know, pliers, just flatten the end a little bit and that'll help get it threaded. There we go. I'm gonna make sure my camera has its light on. Is that, it's a little better. There we go, yeah. And so I'm folding that down about you know, seven or so inches, maybe more like 10 inches, just to make it a manageable length for me to pull my thread through. And now I'm gonna get my size eights and my size tens. So some size eight seed beads here. These are size tens. Again, you could use elevens if you'd like to. All right, so the way that these stitches are built is you'll have a set of core beads, which in this design is three size eight seed beads. And so for core beads, um, you'll always want to uh, work your design with the same number of core beads for each globe. And so if you know, you could do them with four, but this design has three. So always think of those three beads as your center. And you might not actually see them while you're stitching. Uh, once you get it covered up, it'll they disappear in there, but it can be fun to play with um, using a different color for your core beads, because then you get like a pop of color inside of the globe. I'll show you what I mean. So on this one, I used a different color inside. I used this kind of tealish matte AB finished one. So you can see it peeking in there. And that just gives it some dimension. And that's a really fun design element to add to your piece if you want to try that and play with that. Um, so my core beads for this design, I'm going to do, I'm going to reverse it. I'll do the light color on the inside and I'll put the dark color on the outside. Or actually, Maybe red would be better. And a little easier to see. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, so we'll go with that. So there's my core beads. And then you just want to pick up one uh, size eight and one 10 or 11, one eight, then another 10, and another eight. And that's an arm. So whenever I refer to like the arm beads, that's gonna be that set. And so coming back to our core beads, this is the side that um, my working thread is coming out of, this side. This is my tail side over here. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. I keep working in the bottom of the mat there. Here we go. So again, this is the working side and this is the tail side. You wanna come up through the tail side. There we go. And then pull tight. And this is also a chance to adjust your tail length because it'll still move. So you can pull it. I gave myself way more tail than I needed there. In the handout, it says to leave about a 15 inch tail and that works, um, that works really well for all of the closure styles. So there's one arm. We're gonna make six of these. And they're all going to go through this, these three core beads. And that's why the, the size 12 beading needle is kind of handy because there's a lot of passes. But it, it works. And you may even need to get a seventh pass through there if you're weaving in. So it's good to, good to have a 12 handy. 
So there's another arm section. And I'm just going to do the same thing as before. This is my tail side. This is the working side. I'm coming up through the tail side. And everything's really, it's still pretty loose right now. So I'm using, I'm pulling on the tail to tighten it up and using my finger to hold everything in place while I pull it. After this second one though, it will start to tighten up and it will stop moving on you, which will be helpful while you're working. So there's two. The same thing as before, an eight, 10, eight, 10, and an eight. And then I kind of fold it over just like that and start to hold one side and then just go through, go through those three again. There we go. And same thing as before, an eight and a 10, eight, 10, and eight. This is my fourth pass. Okay, I need two more. And also um, in the handout, it mentions that you can do six or seven. Seven is, um, it's a, a fuller look and you'll, you really won't be able to see the core beads at all. They'll be totally buried in there, but um, it's kind of fun to experiment with that and see what you like for your design. But so that was my fifth one. And so can, you can start to see, it's kind of like a little globe already, but I got, got room for at least one more. So I'll pick up another arm. I'm going back through those three. And there's, there's what six looks like. And six is what I did on this design here. And then on this one, this has seven. And so you can see it's very full and they kind of start to sit a little bit on top of each other. I thought that look was cool too. It, it has a more organic, almost like, you know, kind of like the messy wrap feel. And so that appealed to me a lot in this design. And then in this one, I wanted to be able to see that dimension of those core beads being a different color because it made it look like an ocean with deeper water. I was going for something like that. So totally up to you, your style, whether you want to do six or seven um, on your globes. So I'm going to stop there. Um, I'm adding arms and show you adding on, like, for example, if you wanted to do the spaces, let's do the spaces version first. I'm going to grab some of my size six seed beads and just show you what that looks like. So this is also totally up to you, your style, what you want to do. Um, on my bracelets, what I did was I picked up an eight, slid that down, then I used a 10, and then I went for a six, I went for another 10, and then I went for another eight. And that was what I did for my gaps. So that's, um, you know, these little gaps here. So that's how those were built. And then I started with three more core beads. Let's change color for fun. So here's my three more core beads right here. And then I picked up six more arm beads. Oops, I got two C beads on here. So here's an arm set. And now you'll just want to go through only those three core beads. All right, and there's one. And here's two. And 
Danielle, if you can, will you just show the beads that you're picking up? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I moved my camera down earlier because it was, I felt like it was really far away. See, I cleaned my desk. I highly recommend not cleaning your desk to everybody. So that'd be as you left it last time, it'll be perfect. <laughs> so there's, is that a little, yeah, that's better. It looks a little. So these are my sixes, my eights in one color, my eights and my tens are right here. Okay, so I've got two arms on the core here. I don't need, I'd like to add four more. So eight, 10, eight, 10, and another eight. And we'll come back through here. And I need to do that three more times. So I'm just gonna really quickly grab another arm set here. And yeah, you'll get into like kind of a, a workflow or this, this becomes really fast for you. You'll be surprised how quickly and one of these designs can be worked up. And so is that one, two, three, four, there's five, I need one more. I'm getting a little tight. If you find that it's hard to get your needle through I do think, especially if you're using the eights in the core like that, that it's okay to use some chain those pliers to pull it. And here I'm just helping it sit where I want it to sit. There we go. So there's two. Now this is an important step that I wanted to share. Um, and this is just something I do. It's not required, but it's a really nice add. Um, you will get spaces here. See how there's like all these little if you're doing one of these where there's space between the two, and even when you're doing one like this, um, you don't want space here. And so one of the ways I, I fix the space is I'll go, before I move on and keep building more of my globes, um, I'll go back down through one of my arms. It doesn't matter which, which arm you choose. Let me just pick up the one that's next to you. And again, this is optional. This is just, um, it's bells and whistles if you want to take it up a notch and make it more sturdy and durable. But I just went through, I went through the arm and now I want to go through this, but I don't want to make my, I don't want to make my beads sit kind of, you know, at a slant. So there's a little trick here. You remember all those threads from all of our arms we had before? You can travel under them. So I'm exiting I hope this is okay to see, but I'm exiting from this arm. I'm gonna go under the threads of the next two arms, which essentially centers me, right? This is just a little extra trick. This isn't in the handout. I just thought I would just show you guys what I what I really do. Um, I'm gonna go through all of those beads that we added as the little separator. So all those. And now I want to come back up and get back over here. And to do that, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use, I'm going to use these threads here that are part of my arms. I went under two of them. One or two is fine. And it should be perfectly centered there. And then come back up. So come back up through all of the beads above it, including the three core beads that's in the, the last globe you created. And there you go. Now you won't get this little space in here. I made one of these in my, my very early days of seed beading for my mom. And I put a bunch of like really heavy gemstones in between and she wore it and wore it and then brought it to me once and it had thread showing all in between every single bead. And so I, I had to remake it. <laughs> so this will save you having to do that. It'll make it, make it last a long time. 
Okay, so for the next one, I'm gonna do one where I don't leave a space just to show you how that looks. And um, let me choose, pick a bead, any bead here. I'll go with this one here. I never noticed it before, but there's a lot of lamp work at Michael's. I really love lamp work glass beads. And sometimes it can be tricky to figure out what to do with them because they have really large holes. This design is perfect for lamp work beads, I think. So it's kind of kind of my go-to if I want to use one of those. And so here's another place where you can make a choice if you want to not have a bead here. So I just exited from the top of that last globe. You could put another eight there and then add your bead. And so the choice is yours if you want to do that. It's all based on how you want it to look and how you want it to kind of sit. But I'll show you what it looks like with a bead there. Just lots of fun things to play around with. See, I'm thinking I like it better with that one bead because I can see this one so much clearer and it's got a lot of detail work at the bottom with that little flower. So sticking with my convention, putting another eight on top, that's not going to be a core bead. And it's, um, it's going to be okay. It does not sink into, it doesn't sink into my lamp work. If it did, I would probably remove this one and have it just sit right on top. That's another great thing about these dots is that they will hold heavy beads with large holes. But this one's working with my eight spacers and I like that. So I'm gonna stick with that and I'm gonna pick up three more core beads. So here's three more of those. Okay, three core beads. And now let's just build six more arms. And then after that, I'm gonna check in with you guys and see how you feel about seeing that again or if you want to um, move on to closing them, closure styles. Totally up to you guys. I think we're doing really nicely on time. Okay, so there's one. And here's two. And so I'm just going through those three. I'm not going through that one that I used as my top bead that's left there in the turquoise. I'm just going through those three core beads with each of these arms. Oops, there, three, yeah. There's my fourth one. Let me get one more. No, two more, sorry. This is my fifth. What color am I using? This one. Okay, last one. All right, and so just like before, I'm gonna show you one more trick here. Um, there's my six beads in the globe. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before because I don't want, I don't want there to be a gap between this and the next globe. So I'm gonna go down through one of the arms. And like I said, there's no gap now, but after you wear this like three times, there will be a gap. So that here's that same trick again, where I went down through one arm and then I just kind of went underneath the threads of the next two arms. I wanna see if I'm on camera clearly here. So here's the one I'm exiting, I'm exiting from that arm right there and going underneath these next threads. You don't have to go under the threads, you can just zip through it, but um, I found that it just helps it center itself a little bit more. So that's why I do that. Same thing down here. I went through that eight spacer bead, my main bead and the next eight spacer. So coming through there. And then I'm going to use my threads to turn. So these are threads. Um, you could also, if you want to, you could just go down through the core beads, come up through an arm and then go back. 
that's also a really great way to do it. In fact, I think that's what I wrote up in the handout because I thought that was easier to explain than this crazy thread thing I'm doing. But this is a time saver and it um, uses less thread and it works great. So I just went under two and I'm coming back up. And now I'm gonna go through everything. Spacer beads, network beads, and the three core beads above. And there you go. So that tightens up really nicely. No spaces here at all. You can pull in either direction and there's just no space. Okay, so um, I'd like to check in with you guys and see what would you guys like to see next? I can start one of these again from scratch. I can move on to closures. We could talk about earrings a little bit. Um, we could talk about buttons. If everyone feels good about this, I can move on to that. Danielle, it's Carmi. I'm just gonna make one quick recommendation. Sure. I, I think you should start one um, just from scratch just make one ball and okay. show how you add the extra beads and then we'll move on to closures. Great. Okay, yeah. let me grab another, um, I'm gonna cut another section of thread and just set this one aside in case we need it. So let's see. Um, and again, in the handout, it says to cut about 50 inches or so. Um, what you'll find, oh, and to add thread, I should show you guys that. Um, and I will, I'll do that on this next sample here. But if you cut between 50 and 60 inches, you might not need to add any thread at all. So I found that that was plenty for my design. I think it just depends what you're going for with thread length. Um, but adding threads is no big deal, so no stress there. Um, flattening my, I'm flattening my thread so I can get it through the needle easier. And there we go. Fold it over about six, seven inches or so. And I'm gonna leave a 15 inch tail and pick up three core beads. Like the red core beads here. Bring that down, leaving that 15 inch tail. And then pick up an arm segment. Arm segments are an eight and a 10 or an 11 if you'd like to use 11s. An eight and, um, and a 10 and then another eight. So eight, 10, eight, 10, eight. And that, you know, that count is, um, I completely made that up for this design. So um, if you like it, totally go for it. If you wanted to change that up, there are no rules. This stitch will work with any count as long as you're consistent. You can have any number of core beads you want, any arm count. You can put different beads on your arms, like you could put crystals or little fire polish beads or, you know, anything, but um, for this one, I'm just picking up an arm segment of the eight, 10, eight, 10, eight, and going back through those core beads. And this is, this is the tail side and this is the working side. So this is where that working thread's exiting. I'm coming back up through where the tail side is exiting. And pull tight and there's two. And I'm gonna keep going until I've done that for a total of six times. There's another segment here. And then I'm folding it over. And um, something I used to wonder when I was first doing the stitch myself was, does it matter if you overlap one arm? Um, it really, it, like for example, if I wanted to come and put another one here, <laughs> that should be fine. And I don't think it hurts anything. I do tend to work in a circle, folding my last one over. I still think it would work even if you didn't do that. But that's just, that's kind of how I've been working mine. But they're all going the same place. So I still think it would be great no matter what. So there's four, let's do two more. Another arm. And again, this is the tail side that I'm coming up through. And I think that's five. 
one quick way to count if you lose count is to turn it up like this and count okay four or five so i need one more All right, and so there's six arms on the core of three beads. Lots of design potential there. So many things you can do. You can add your next bead. You can add um, a spacer. You can, gosh, there's just so many things. You can just go straight to the next, um, the next globe if you wanted. That's even really cute. Um, let's show you, I'll show you with a bead really quick. How are we doing on 331? I think we're pretty good. So there's a bead with no space. And if I just wanted to go straight for more core beads now, that would work. And, um, and while I'm adding this, I was gonna talk about adding new thread. But if you, like for maybe you're making a necklace or something and you want it to be um you know really long you would need to add thread at some point and it's really easy what you would do to add thread is bring a new strand up through any bead in your center so you could bring it through on like one here or in the core beads and then just loop around one arm come back up loop around another arm come back up once you've done that two three times you've got a pretty solid lock and you can test it by pulling on the new thread that you added and seeing if it moves, if the tail moves. And when it stops moving, you're, you're good. And you just keep on stitching. And then after you've crossed past the point where your old working thread was, do that same thing again, but leave it up into the work. And so that um, that usually works great for adding thread for me. I think it, I think it will work really nicely. Um, you could tie knots. I know I get asked that a lot about the knots. Um, if you were going to tie a knot, I would say do it here underneath these little thread bridges. But you, you shouldn't have to use it. The, the weaving in works really well. And so from here, I'm going to finish this last little ball and then I'm going to show you reinforcing it and then just hop into the closures. So see, there's another arm. That's arm number two. I might go a little bit fast on this one. And here's arm number three. It's about eight, ten, eight, ten, eight. Oops. I hit my camera. <laughs> the camera's really close. I'll just show you guys when I switch back to the other one how my hand is like right there. <laughs> it's really tiny. Um, so there's there's an arm. Um, coming back up through those three core beads. There's my fourth one. I need two more. Where's that one? Oh. Okay, one more. Okay, let's put the core beads here. And again, if you wanted to do seven, you could do seven, but uh, that was uh, with six going around. And then here's that reinforcing step one more time. So we're gonna come back down through one of the arms. And then when you get to the bottom of the arm, just before you go through the next bead, just travel under like one or two more threads. So those are the threads that are from my other arms here. I'm hoping that's clear to see. I might move it up and no, that's not as clear. Let's see, that's, I know it's really hard to see, but kind of picture as each of these arms is going into the core beads, they have their, there's a strand of thread going through that core. And what I'm doing is just going under it. 
and this is completely optional. If it's confusing in any way, just don't even worry about it, just skip it. But if you find that it makes your work look a little more centered, which is what, what I liked about it, then give it a try and see if you like it too. It's not super noticeable either way. I think it just kind of adds a little bit of, uh, you know, an extra force to center something. And I'm doing the same thing here, going underneath one of these. But what you could also do is just go through the core, come up an arm, and then go through the main bead again. That would work great too. So I'm coming up through that main bead and going through all the core beads. Does anyone have any questions about reinforcing? Do you want to see the going through an arm bead way? Or does this, was that pretty clear? I think it is, Danielle. Is it? Okay. I think, I think everyone was really interested to see how you add a closure and finish the top and the bottom. Yay, okay, great. So um, two different styles. Uh, we have the choice of doing a button closure, and I think I'll start with that one since it's the, it's the more complex one. But you can do two different things. You can put just a regular toggle clasp or like a lobster claw. Um, I'll probably go with this one today. Or you can do a button closure. Attaching a button with some adjustable loops. And this is a really, a really fun way to make something for like a, a sale if you're doing a sale and you don't know somebody's wrist size. So and we can go over both of those. I had a sample here that was built in the same way as this one. So I thought I'd do the button on this one to show you guys how that looks. And um, I'm going to start with the loops first so that I can measure my button underneath it. And so I'm just threading my needle here. And I need some more size eight seed beads. I'm gonna grab those really quick. It's a pretty red color. I swear I had this color out too. No, that's oh, right there. <laughs> okay. So there's a, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm gonna try to stick to what I did in the handout. But what I did there was I picked up two eights. One is a spacer, and one is the first bead of my closure. I'm gonna bring that down. And it should sit tightly underneath that last globe or the first globe that you made. And then I'm alternating um, picking up beads, um, eights and tens. I'm gonna get out my tens in this color. And so here's how here's how it looks. We're gonna pick up a 10 and an eight and a 10 and an eight. And we're gonna do a lot of those. And then we're gonna come around and go through one of the eights. So I'm gonna to have to keep track of my count. And that's the only tricky part of this. It's not too tricky, but I think I put the counts in our handout too. I think we decided it was like 22 of them, something like that. So you'll just pick up from here a 10 and an eight, and then just keep doing that until you have about 22. Alternatively, if you're using a different button, you can just lay this over your button and see based on the size of your button what's going to work for you there. So you would want it to touch the mat, go over the button, and then touch the mat on the other side of the button. And that's how you know it'll fit. So let me keep going here, show you what I mean with that. Danielle, in the handout, you definitely made it 22 and 21. Good memory. Woohoo. <laughs> Yay. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's looking like, so that would be half of that. So that seems pretty good. I'm going to go with that. And so I need to repeat that again to make the next, the next set. So I'm going to do one for the transition and then another half.
I lost count. <laughs> so I'm counting from here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I'm at 11. Okay, we're good. Here's 12, 13, 14, and 15. 17. One more. Yay. Okay. Okay, so now we're, remember, this is going to be two buttonholes. That's why it's so long. But we want to come back down through the bead that is the seventh from the bottom. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I want to come back down through this bead, just the eight. I just want to go through that eight and then pull tight. And again, these counts could be different for you if you're using a different button. These were the counts that worked for the, the button that I had. So there's your top loop. And now we just need to finish the other side of your this part of the button loop. So that's going to be seven size eight beads spaced by a 10. So I'm picking up a 10 and an eight, a 10 and an eight. There's four, there's five, there's six, and I think this is my seventh one. I feel like I have too many. Oh, that's because my seventh one, I'm going to share my seventh one with the bottom. So I need to pick up six there. Yeah. So after you exit that last one, pick up six. And then we share the seventh one here at the bottom and go through that one and the next um, eight that we added, the little spacer eight. Here we go. My math challenged moment for the day. And I still feel like that's not right. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I've only got five, guys. Look at that. What? What? Put the five on there. There we go. <laughs> now it's got too many. So it's kind of just like figuring it out as I go. There we go. <laughs> this is actually what I did when I did the original sample is I took it apart probably two times until I thought it was perfect. And so now you've got something that finally looks right and you got to decide if your button fits. So this is the part I highly recommend doing before you leave in. And um, it looks also like I missed, um, yeah, I missed a, a bead there. I wish I'd have had another 10. But what you'll want to do is get your button and test it before before you start to weave in. And I didn't do that once and I wove it in and I got all the way to the end. It was so sad because it, uh, <laughs> I had to take it apart because it didn't work. But um, if you know, if you test it when it's like this, just kind of pinch, pinch right here and then see if you can get it to go over both sections. So it worked here. So I feel good about that one. And if it doesn't, you just, you know, you pull it out and recount and fix it again. So this seems really tight. Check this out. It's not really working. And I think it's because I missed a bead up there. Yeah, so if you're seeing anything like this, that's a red flag to stop and restring it. I don't know if you guys can see that, how tight that is, but I've got thread here and I have to make space for it to go through. So um, let's see, we've got the 15 minute mark here. I'll show you fixing it. In order to do that, I'm gonna have to pull out of this one here.
There may be some variation on the size of the button. It could also be that the beads are a little slightly different size, or maybe I'm using 11s versus 10s. So lots of different factors. So you I feel like you do have to measure each one each time. Okay, so there should be five, six, seven. So I'm gonna come down through the eighth one to see if that's a little bit better. Test that. Yeah, so that, that's how it should look. I'm feeling like that's the better one. Okay, so now I'm just gonna copy what I have here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There's one, two, three, four, five. And then there's six. Yay! <laughs> Okay, and I know that's gonna work because that was tested before. Excellent, okay. So I recommend going through that, that activity there that'll save you having to cut your work apart. It should be sad. Um, so at, at, once you've got that, you'll have to reinforce it. What I did on mine was the same little trick where I picked up these little threads that sit above the arms. I just went through two here and go through those two and then come back up through all those beads. So you'll have to weave around. Just come back up through all of them here. And see, it'll get really tight then too and look really nice. Just going through every single one. When you reach this junction, go through it, go through that eight and then go all the way around. And it takes a while, but you'll want to do this. Um, twice is OK, three is better. I have to remember which side you came up. I came up this side, so I'm going back down this side. OK. Hey, Danielle, I think everyone hey, appreciated that you figured out a way to fix your problem. <laughs> yeah. Most of us would have gone for a smaller button. <laughs> Well, I've had these moments before. Can you tell I've done this before? Or I've had to cut my work up and I've been so sad. So I've just learned to be really careful at this step. And, you know, it takes a really long time and, and it, you know, it reveals my math challenges, but it, it's still, it's so worth doing because then you're, you got this beautiful piece at the end and it all fits and you can get your button on. Um, if I wasn't on camera right now, I would, I would go under another bridge and I'd go all through that again. And then I would weave it in. But I'm going to stop there so I have time to show you putting the button on and the lobster claw. But just um, I'm leaving it here so I can go back and do that later. All right, so I already flattened that one. That one's good. Getting the needle on here. So this is the top of that bracelet. Okay, and here's my button. And so what you want to do to get your button on is there's a couple different ways you can do it. But um, leaving, leaving a space of three is what I recommend so that you have wiggle room with your button. So you wanna put three size eight seed beads. And am I still in camp? Oh, good, here we go. Sorry, I moved down again. There's three size eight seed beads. So here's where I exited from the last globe I made. Putting three on here. And you could even do four it's up to you how much space you want. I might do a fourth one, why not? Um, and then pick up a 10 or an 11 if you're using 11s. Come through your button, another 10. And then bring that last 10 up. You don't wanna go through that one. Just go through all of those. Let's see, I added four of those size eight. So go through all those again. And these beads are um, small enough to go through my button shank. So one of them moved. I'm going to encourage it to sit on the other side here. That one over there.
and I'm just doing that for symmetry. If you have a really big, um, you know, hole size on your button and you wanted to do more than two of these beads, you could. If you see what I'm doing here, I've got two tens and then my thread goes through the button shank. So it went through the four size eight beads, through the 10, through the button, back through the other 10 and down through all four of those. You could add a bunch of tens up here if you wanted to. Um, I didn't do that on this one, but you could. And our same trick as before, picking up those threads that sit on top of the arms and going underneath one of them or two of them. And we'll need to do this a couple of times. So there's time number one and back up through all the eights. And then I'm going to loop around 10 button 10. Back through the 10. Back through all the beads. And so when, but when I was down here before, I went through one that was over here. You see how there's a lot more space over here than here. So I'm going to turn my thread around here and pick up one on the other side. That's just for symmetry. So I'm back up through. Okay, and so it would be the same thing. You'd go, I think I have time to show you guys just quickly weaving in. Well, we're down to nine minutes. Let's see, going around. The good news is this step that I just showed you, it's the same process to put on your toggle bar. So you wanna have, when you use a toggle, you wanna have wiggle room for sure so that you can get it through the loop. So it's actually the same exact connection to go through a toggle as to go through a button. And then you'd go back down through all those again and so to weave in, um, I like to go through the core beads if I can. So I just went through all three of those. And this is where it's kind of handy to have some pliers to help you get through that core beads one more time, just like that. And now that I'm here, I might go through, because I know that this is really tight, but this one might be a little looser. I might go all the way through this bead, come back down here, and then use those arms to weave in and trim. So I'm thinking that's what I'll do. Go down through those. Try not to stab myself with a needle though. Ouch. <laughs> there we go. And that's even tighter. So again, I might use my pliers. It's actually too tight. I must have done more weaving in down there. So we'll do it up here. <laughs> Let me go back through that eight. It looks like on this design, I had a spacer eight. So through those three core beads, now I'm using an arm to weave in my thread. Does anyone have any questions about weaving in? I'm just showing it just in case anyone Ask questions, but it's um, it's what we call following your thread path. Go down through another arm here. Seems like everybody's probably got the hang of that. Okay, and I'll just trim it there. You could go, if you wanted to bring it back down through the core bead one more time, you could, but I feel like that's, it's a pretty good connection there. And so you bring it around and you have this adjustable finish, which is really nice. Um, where are we? We're at 355. Okay, really quick on the toggles. So the toggle end, we just we just did the button shank the same way to show how to do that. Um, that is the same way you would attach the bar. So if I was going to build this one and put the bar up there, I would do that same thing as before. And then to attach the um, this end, 
so the hoop end, you don't need to give it that much space. So remember we added, I think it was either three or four size eights, kind of up to you. Um, but down here, you wouldn't need to do that much. You could just do one or two. So let me show that really quick. Um, I think we're good on time. So like one or two and then another 10 in the right color. <laughs> through your jump ring, and then another 10. And then just go back down through those eights. And then the same thing as before, you'd wanna pick up one of these little bridges, little thread bridges here. All right. And it would basically just look a little closer to the last globe. Um, anyone have any questions about that really quick before I switch back to the... Danielle? Yeah, um, you did have a couple. You have had a couple of questions. I think, um, given our time, what everyone is dying to see is how did you end the earrings? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let me get those out. So, um, same exact thing, actually. Same thing I just showed you, but with some different counts and some different beads. So you saw how, like, when we were doing the um, here was with two eights. Put this one on. And then on the uh, on this sample, we had the four eights. On the earring, I want eight, six, and then the two tens at the top. But um, so this was style. You could do anything that looked nice look nice to you. There's really no um, requirement for what beads you'd like to use as your connection here. But that's what I did. I went eight, six, and then a ten through the ear wire or lever back and uh, through another 10, then back through my six. And I did that same thing where I picked up these little bridges to reinforce it three times. At the bottom to attach a charm. For that, I just did one size eight bead and then the 10 went through the jump ring and then picked up another 10, went back through the eight. And then same as before, I picked up thread bridges in there to reinforce that. So I don't, what do you guys think? Does that uh, explain it pretty well or any other questions on that? The, uh, the only other question I'd love to ask for everybody is, would you consider using a globe instead of the button? You know what? It would maybe, maybe work. Actually, I'd love to see if someone tries that and then wears it for a while just to see, like, my only thought here, let me cut the one off this one really quick. Hey, don't be sad, everybody. I'll fix it. I promise. I cut that one because <laughs> I had to know. Um, you would need to adjust these counts because, um, yeah, you know what? I think it would work. See, if you made this a little smaller, that would totally work. Or possibly with bigger beads. Bigger beads or like, yeah, or, you know, if you put like a crystal here at the bottom, um, you know, maybe one of one of these strands that I got, it came with these little crystals. And all you would need to do is do like a little Pico bead at the top to keep it, to hold it on there. I don't know, who, whoever, whoever had that idea, that's a great idea. That's a really cool idea. I have a feeling that. there'll be a little bit more experimentation after this class, Danielle, so thank you. And thank you for the extra because the earrings are not part of your design, but you know, it. Um, it's nice to give people that option to make them also. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm gonna switch back to my other camera so I can see you guys, or you guys can see me. I need to figure out how to do those cameras where you can see the mat and the person at the same time. If I figure that out, that would be kind of <laughs> awesome. But um, I wanna say thanks and um, just really quick show you guys next week's project if there's, I know we're over a little bit here, but um, I'm gonna be really fun slider bracelets next week. They look like this. We put sliders on peyote stitch delicas, and there's one of three hearts here. And then the class after that is right angle weave rope. And it sounds scary. It's actually really awesome. Super cool class. Um, and we'll have fun with that one. And then we're going to revisit our October earrings, um, the star flowers, and turn that into a necklace or a bracelet. It could be a bracelet too. So there's the next classes.
And there's a few others on the website too that are coming up after uh, February. I think our March classes and our first April class are also up. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next Friday. I, I really enjoy these Fridays with everybody. So thank you for being here. Have a good night. Bye.